the quarterback series on Netflix. I think it's great. And I'm already thinking who will be the three for next year. Would it be Josh Allen or Joe Burrow? Like get an elite guy, get a middle of the pack guy, and then get kind of an experimental guy. You can't have three franchise quarterbacks. I like the blend. I like the Mahomes, superstar, Super Bowl champion, Kirk Cousins, one and out playoff appearance, Marcus Mariota benched during the season. Like Josh Allen or Joe Burrow would be the top tier guy. The second tier guy would be Tannehill. Maybe he'd be the third tier guy because he's got Will Levis breathing down his neck. That kind of tracks the whole Mariota vibe. I don't know that Tannehill is going to get bench this year if he's going to just disappear and it never is really fully explained the way it could be or should be but you need those three you need that and and maybe they'll go with a different formula maybe it'll be one of the young quarterbacks maybe they'll get a rookie to do it different look into preparation last year there weren't a lot of attractive rookies Kenny Pickett was the only first rounder that would have made sense if he would have done it. This year, you got Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson. Wouldn't it be great if Anthony Richardson is one of them? Oh, I'd like that. I'll go. I think Josh Allen's more fascinating because of where the Bills are right now. I'd go Josh Allen, Anthony Richardson, and then Russell Wilson. That would be something. I don't know that Russell Wilson wants that, and I don't think Sean Payton would want it either. Dak Prescott. That would be interesting. And the Cowboys have done hard knocks three times, so they don't shy away from the cameras. But in addition to preseason hard knocks, in-season hard knocks, they got to figure out which three quarterbacks they're going to follow. And obviously, it starts now. They're going to know now. Last year, they kept it quiet because we didn't know that this was even a thing. We didn't find out until after it was done that it was a thing. I wonder if this year they'll tell us before the season who it's going to be. So, hey, Peyton Manning, executive producer, he gets his own name. When they show the executive producer, they have two pages of the graphics. Page one, just Peyton Manning. He's the guy running the show. He's the quarterback of quarterback. Peyton, give me Joe Burrow. No, give me Josh Allen. I'll get it straight one of these days. Give me Josh Allen. Give me Anthony Richardson. And then dealer's choice for the third one. It's up to you. Maybe Kirk Cousins again. Kirk Cousins to me was the most fascinating of the three. And I've written a couple of things about it. And it's funny to see some of the reaction on Twitter. And it reminds me why I'm glad we don't have comments anymore. Like, oh, I don't need to watch TV. Florio is going to tell me what was on the show. Well, not everybody's watching the show. Not everybody has Netflix. And even if you watch it, part of what we do is we find what's interesting and draw it out and highlight it. And the first thing I saw in the series that really caught my attention was the disclosure by Kirk Cousins that he had suffered some sort of a rib injury when he was hit by Deron Payne in the week 10 game against the Washington Commanders. Because as we were all focused that week on whether or not Josh Allen would be able to play with the elbow injury he suffered that same day against the Jets, we didn't know Kirk Cousins was maybe an iffy proposition with his ribs, either a guy that may not be ready to go, although I never got the sense that he wouldn't be able to play. The question was, if he got banged around enough by the Bills' defense, would he reach a point where he couldn't continue? But he was getting treatment on his ribs. He was talking about how they're bruised underneath, and it's just a matter of time before the bruise comes to the front. He made it clear that he was injured, that he wasn't just in pain, that it was something that lingered beyond the game. And again, I don't care whether or not the NFL does or doesn't influence or enforce, excuse me, it's injury reports because we know it's a joke, but situations like this prove what a joke it is. And it highlights at a time when we're paying attention to the potential issues with gambling, the existence and the value of inside information, because people knew what was going on with Kirk Cousins, possible rib injury. The team knew, agent likely knew, family knew. The people working on the quarterback series knew because he was talking about it. Nobody else did. And look, the easy response, well, he shouldn't be listed. He fully participated in practice all three days. Yeah, that's fine. But we see all the time guys listed as full participants in practice, but it's still disclosed they have an injury. And I thought that the threshold for that was getting treatment. If you go to the training room for something, you're on the injury report. That's how I thought it always was. Cousins was presumably in the treatment room, training room, getting treatment on his ribs. The way I've always understood it should have been on the injury report. So 
That was the first one that caught my eye. The second thing that caught my eye, and, and this, I don't know why this is a hot take. When Tom Brady, the GOAT, pending whatever Patrick Mahomes does with the balance of his career, when Tom Brady says, and I don't have the quote in front of me, but basically I work all the time and I sacrifice my life for this sport. And if you want to compete with me, you better be willing to turn your life over to football. He says that and we're like, damn, well, now we know why he has all those rings. Now, that singular obsession with football can become unhealthy and it can throw your life out of balance. And he went through some stuff last year that may have resulted in whole or in part from his unhealthy obsession with football. But the reality is there's always guys like that out there who are very talented and they're very obsessed because they're never satisfied. They want championship and another and another and another and another. And those are the guys you're competing with. So, and I'm not making a judgment here of Kirk Cousins, but I think it's significant that he decided to disclose and the Vikings decided to the extent they had any influence over this to allow him to disclose that he re religiously takes Tuesdays off when they're on a Sunday to Sunday schedule. Always takes Tuesday completely off. The impression he created is he does nothing, doesn't open the iPad and look at film, doesn't study the playbook, the game plan. And usually what happens is the game plan is devised on Tuesday, given to the quarterback, maybe Tuesday night. I don't get the impression he does anything with any of that. He takes a full 24 hours off in season every week when they're on a Sunday to Sunday schedule. And again, that's fine. And if he's comfortable with it, if he thinks it's helping him be as competitive as he can be, if he thinks he needs that balance, you know, the, the law of diminishing returns and whatnot. But, but as he acknowledged, most quarterbacks don't do that. And I know it's the player's day off. And this, and I don't know if this is a generational thing or what, and I understand that people can be very protective of their free time. Got to be protective of my free time. My attitude is, if you want to be great at something, there's no substitute for spending the time on it. And work and work and work and work and work. And yes, it could potentially be unhealthy. It could throw your life out of balance. Maybe you don't get enough sleep. Maybe you don't eat well enough. Maybe you have issues with personal relationships because you're so obsessed. But the problem is there's always going to be somebody that obsessed. There's always going to be somebody who's as good as you, who's working harder than you and getting the absolute most and then some out of what they have. So they're ready to go win in that 60 minute window when you've got three or four plays that make a difference in the game. So, again, Cousins said this is something he started doing eight years ago. I'll leave it for others to come to the conclusion as to whether or not his struggles in prime time or his inability to get beyond the first round of the playoffs other than 2019 when they won wild card game in overtime before getting beat pretty handily by the 49ers. Does that have anything to do with shutting it down? I just – Look, I, I don't I don't want to do the get off my lawn thing, but you've got plenty of time off as a professional football player. I mean, I mean, real I, I hate to I hate to be like the people that I say, hey, listen, don't line up behind the owners, don't chastise the players, don't say they get paid too much money because they are worth everything they get and they should be getting more. Great quarterbacks should be getting more than what they're paid. But man, during football season, when you know that the guys you're competing with are putting in work on Tuesday, they're studying film, they're studying your uh, defense, they're studying their own film to identify their flaws, they're doing, you know, just whatever it takes to get better, a little bit better, a little bit better. You think about that, that Tom Brady mindset. And that's what you're competing with. See, that's the thing. It's because I've seen some reaction like, oh, well, maybe one of these days we will applaud people who prioritize their life over their work. Well, maybe we will, but until they start giving out Lombardi trophies for it, it doesn't matter in the NFL. It's, a, it's an extension of the coaching mindset. Sleeping in your office, sleeping three hours, burning the candle at both ends and in the middle from really all year. You get that couple of weeks off, but you know the, the great coaches work and work and work because there's always something else that you can find time to do. It's not a matter of being inefficient. It's not a matter of delegating. There's always something else that you can find time to do. When you, especially when you get into the six days between games, 
there was a there was a show years ago called Six Days to Sunday that focused on the Vikings during one of Dennis Green's seasons. But but that that title was just six. That's what it is. It's six days to Sunday game, and then the next day you're six days to Sunday. And when you're taking one of those six days, and you've put a wall around it for 24 hours, it just puts more pressure on you the rest of the time. If you're going to shut down for 24 hours of the available hours between Sunday and Monday or Monday and Sunday, you better be getting the most out of the rest of it. Because on that day that you're not doing anything, the quarterback you're playing this weekend probably is. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.